the topic of discussion for this presentation is correctly filling the EPICA CDD. CDD stands for Customer Due Diligence Form. The details that you need to provide to us when incorporating company through us. So let's have a look. Now what happens is when you get in touch with us, normally we will send you some forms to fill up and we will ask the details like passport copy, your second identity card copy and your proof of address. Now, when you speak of incorporation, there are two distinct steps. The first step is incorporation of the company itself, the services which we provide to you. And the second part is bank account opening. Now, having a company but not having a bank account is generally of no use because unless you have a bank account, you will not be able to make the payment or receive the sales receipts. So both these things happen normally at the same time, one after other. First company is incorporated. And then the details are passed on to the bank representative to open the bank account. Now for both these activities, two different sets of information are required. The first set is normally passport number, proof of address, your name, contact number, email, and there are so many things, but it is more about the contact details and who you are. And the second set is about what you intend to do. Information about the intended business, what is your current occupation? What do you intend to do in Singapore? What are your financial projections and so on? So the first part is normally covered by EPICA CDD form, which I'm going to discuss in this video. And the second part is normally covered by bank KYC form, which I have already created another video. So there are two videos related to CDD and here I'm speaking about EPICA CDD form. Now let's have a detailed look at this CDD form. So I will shift to Word document. So here is the form and it is called as E1 Customer Due Diligence Acceptance Form for Company Incorporation with Individual Shareholding. There is another form for Corporate Shareholding, but the form does not really change much. It is basically the same information with slightly different fields being captured. So important thing to note here is that this information is required as per ACRA Accounting and Corporate Regulatory Authority regulations which were introduced in 2015 and subsequently amended in 2017. So every company which provides company incorporation services in Singapore will have to follow this kind of form. They will have their own form, but they have to get all these details. So let's have a look on section A. So I'm going to scroll a bit down and this is section A. So this is information of the customer or the agent. So this part, the details, which I will explain in a bit are to be filled for the person who is filling this form and contacting or interacting with us primarily. So in most of the cases, you are the person who are incorporating the company and you will be either director or shareholder of the company. So in that case, you will tick it as self and then you will fill your details. However, in certain circumstances, you may not actually going to be the director or shareholder of the company. You might be acting as an agent. For example, you are a chartered accountant providing services to your client and you are finding company incorporation services for him in Singapore. So in this case, we are actually interacting with you for your client or you might be employee of the company and you are finding and managing all this work for your company or you might be the lawyer or you might be just be an agent company incorporation agent who wants to get commission from us and uh, provide incorporation services for people in your home country to incorporate a company in Singapore. So if that's the case, then in that case, you will click on this agent and not on the self. So understand this, even if you are an agent, your details will be required as per ACRA regulations. Now what details are required? Those are quite straightforward. Your full name as it appears in the passport, including any aliases, your residential address as it appears in the proof of address that you are going to give, your unique identification number, your passport number, or your foreign identification number. Normally passport number is what we rely in case of foreigners and we will take NRIC number uh, for Singaporean and the expiry date of the identification number, your date of birth, your gender, 
all your nationalities normally most of the people have one nationality but there are some countries where multiple nationalities are allowed so list all the nationalities your contact number with country code your email address and tick on the services that you are taking from us so incorporation will mostly be there register address will be there and uh, company secretary nominee director if you are uh, selecting nominee director service and if you are a foreigner and then whether nominee shareholder employment pass annual compliance that you will have to select now moving to the next page then section b is about the information on proposed business entity in singapore so here you are going to give the information about what company you are forming and what that company will be doing so you will have to give the proposed corporation name normally we ask for three options you can give two or if you have already checked if the name is available one is also okay in case first name is not available we will try to book the second name and if second is also not available we will try to book the third name what will be the address of the registered company mostly it will be service provider address especially if you are a foreigner but local people may have their own address and in that case we will use that address proposed date of registration uh, if there is no specific proposed date then you can leave it blank but sometimes some people uh, especially who follow astrology and horoscope they might want to do the registration on a specific date then in that case you can specify that what will be the total capital of the company that information you will provide here so total paid up capital normally the currency is singapore dollars but currency can be changed it can be us dollar or any other currency uh, default is sgd so we have put it here sgd and then you can provide number of shares and price per share normally price per share will be one because that is a practice and the number of shares can be let's say 10,000 in that case the total capital becomes 10,000 into 1 10,000 Singapore dollars in section b2 you will specify what are the business activities of the company so first part asks for broad business activities so normally you will give it in one sentence what this company will be doing there are two slots here so two activities can be mentioned then you will specify what are the detailed business activities so you have to list top three to five products or services that you will be selling in this company and it should cover 80 percent of the projected turnover so here you are expected to explain in detail what exactly you will be doing countries and operation of targeted market so list the countries where majority of your clients and suppliers will be located so if you are singapore focus it can be only singapore but maybe you are into import and export business and you import goods from China and then maybe export it to India, Malaysia, Indonesia. So you will have to list all those countries. Then expected annual sales turnover in the first three years in US dollar equivalents. So right here for first year, how much turnover you expect? For second year, how much turnover you expect? For third year, how much turnover you expect? Now keep it in mind this is not a competition what you have to write here is a realistic estimate what are the sources of fund so amount you are investing in this company from where it has come how did you how were you able to generate this amount whether it has come from your personal savings whether it has come from your existing business whether it has come from your ancestral property whatever is that that you have to mention here and then in this section you have to mention estimated number and value of transactions of inflow and outflow so number of incoming transactions per year for example your sale is hundred thousand dollars projected for a year and you are expected to do it into 10 transactions in a year so then number of transactions per year will be 10 and average value of incoming transaction will be ten thousand that's what i guess so and same way write what exactly are the outgoing transactions per year so this is the information about the proposed singapore company and now let's move on to the next section so here we need information about all the connected parties in this company connected parties means who are going to be the directors who are going to be the shareholders who are the beneficial owners that you will have to specify here so for each person who is a director or shareholder you will have to specify his full name uh, as appears in passport 
then you will have to select whether it is a director or shareholder or both number of shares that this person is going to take so for example there can be only one director shareholder then 100% shareholding will be with this person but there can be more than one also you can specify how much percentage of ownership this person is going to hold so if this person let's say that there are three uh, shareholders and all the three people are directors then you will mark director and shareholder the percentage will be whatever you agree between yourself then you will have to specify passport number of the person date of issue date of expiry and country of issue residential address of the person date of birth place of birth nationality of which country's passport is holding and if he has any additional nationalities then you will have to specify contact telephone number of the person which is home telephone number business number and handphone number we need at least two telephone numbers which are different so don't give only one telephone number and email address which can be either personal or business now this table can capture details for two directors or shareholders in case you need you can duplicate this page you can just select this copy it and duplicate it after this if you have more than two people moving on to the next section it is about political affiliation so is any of your director or shareholder connected to any politically prominent person or a politically exposed person so if you are connected to any politically exposed person then you will have to declare it here so who is a politically exposed person so either you yourself were involved in any prominent public function either in singapore or anywhere outside or in any international organizations like unesco you know etc or you have been in this kind of position previously but have stepped down now or you are an immediate family member or a friend or close associate of a politically exposed person who was in this prominent function either currently or was in past so if you are connected to any political person then you will have to declare yes otherwise you will have to declare no and then you will have to specify which director because we can capture multiple directors here so maybe one of the director is politically connected and other is not so you will have to specify which director is politically connected what is the full name of this politically exposed person to whom he is connected country where this pp is holding or has held prominent public function the nature of function what exactly this politically exposed person was doing dates from and to in which this political person was in power nature of relationship for example brother sister friend close associate whatever it is and information of the person source wealth what is your total net worth and how you got it and information of the source of fund for the proposed company incorporation and then come the last section here you are actually declaring few things so you need to read this very carefully that you are the ultimate beneficial owner of the company and you are not acting as a nominee for any undisclosed third party if you are acting then you will have to declare it to us that all the funds are of clean and non criminal origin and then you undertake tax reporting obligations company will not engage in activities contrary to the law of the uh, singapore and uh, apica consulting has not helped you in filling up this form this form has to be filled up by you and that the information that you provide is truthful and then you put the name of all the people who are going to be involved in this company their passport number or unique identification number date and the signature Uh, you can send this form in a word format itself because after we go through we will send it for electronic signature in the latter stages anyway so you don't need to really write it by pen and then take a scan and send it to us so i think that clarifies how to fill up this cdd form so now after filling up this form and signing the next thing that i will show you what documents to attach because we will need some document copies scanned copies So at this point of time, we don't need notarized or certified copies. Just a plain color copy taken from original is enough. 
and the documents required are as follows so the first part here is for singapore citizens and if you are a singapore citizen then your copy of singapore nric is generally enough for singapore permanent resident which is the second block we will need the copy of your Singapore NRIC and also of copy of your current foreign passport, passport particulars page showing your photo, name and uh, passport number. If you are a Singapore employment pass holder, then we will need copy of your employment pass card, copy of your passport and a proof of residential address. That is because the employment pass card normally does not have a residential address. So these three documents will be required. For non-resident, that is for the foreigners who are intending to incorporate a company in Singapore, the documents that we require are listed here. We need a copy of your passport particular page, scanned color copy. We need a second identity proof, which should be a photo identity. So for example, it can be Aadhaar card for Indians, it can be driving license uh, for any other country. So long as it is government issued and it has a photo ID, that is enough. Malaysians can give their Malaysian identity card and many countries have photo identification mechanism so that card you can provide. And in addition to that, we need a copy of your proof of residential address. This can be in the form of utility bill, bank statement, uh, anything which is taken in latest two months. So these are the documents we will typically require. I am not going to cover the corporate shareholder document because there is another video on it. So I hope what documents to provide and how to fill up this form is clear to you now. Thank you for watching this video. This video was brought to you by Epica Consulting Singapore. Subscribe to our channel today to get notified when new videos are posted.